I've been seeing a lot of interest, strangely, in using materials in Revit to render that have something to do with sand. I don't, I don't know why that is, but I thought I'd make a quick video on a few techniques that can help you to create patterns, uh, sand patterns in particular, uh, in Revit and possibly in Enscape. So uh, first of all, you need to find yourself or draw an image of the sand pattern that you want. If it's sand glass or uh, wind bone glass or whatever it is that you want. Here's a, a pattern of Zen raking, a Zen garden type of sand raking, which is very nice. And I found this on the internet. Uh, anyway, and uh, but the base image that you get uh, besides being high resolution, it's not actually always all that useful in Revit because it has color and, and the way Revit materials work. We actually, what we want is something that's going to make our glass bumpy. So I can take this base image and I can convert it in Photoshop. And that, that's usually a good step. Um, first of all, I can remove the color and uh, Revit processes this a lot better uh, for bump maps. It's not required, but you absolutely uh, will get a better result if you do this. The other thing that you can do is you can kind of increase the contrast. These are all adjustment layers um, that I have modified, uh, you know, to create greater exaggeration in the in the material. Um, and uh, you can also use the curves adjustment layer, which is which is loads of fun. Uh, and and that will also allow you to kind of control how deep those shadows are. So and, and I, you might actually export a couple of these in different configurations, you know, maybe without all this uh, brightness contrast. This will give you a much softer kind of appearance in Revit. But um, you know, you might want more bumpiness or more grittiness depending on what you're after. Anyway, save each of those as a JPEG and we'll go over to Revit. So here we are in the Revit materials library. I've made myself a handy dandy new material and uh, I just you know started with the default material but uh, when I'm going here to the asset library that's you don't have to start there but I, I usually find that the, there are some options in the library for some materials that are obviously handy. And in our case, um, there actually is an etched glass material that could be kind of useful. We could also use, there's frosted ones, there's even frosted ones that have bubbles in them, <laughs> which are kind of fun, uh, that you, you might want to look at and experiment with. As with any material, it's just going to take some experimentation to make it work. So anyway, double click on the material. Uh, to apply it to your uh, surface, your new material. And what you'll see here, there is a, um, a, uh, an image already applied. Now, usually bump maps uh, are black and white. You can click on the material itself and modify the image. Um, in this case, it's something for a door, so I can, I can just click on it and go and browse for my image. And I think I'll choose the extra bumpy one here uh, just for an example. So once you have the image file in your project, you can actually fiddle around with the size of it. Uh, I'm just going to click done here and let's see what it looks like. And of course, it, it, it's not going to render very well immediately. So you might want to do a couple of things depending on how fast your computer works, but you could try it on different types of objects like a, a canvas um, or a vase, depending on what sort of uh, image you, you have used and then also, you know, how big it is. Obviously a smaller surface, our image will appear larger. Now off the bat, it doesn't really look like a whole lot. Um, and you know, I could up the render quality to production quality, but I, I don't have that kind of time because it, my computer is just not that fast. But let's up the amount of bump. I'm just going to drag it all the way up and immediately you can see the bump kind of start to appear on this image. The other thing you can do is change the size of this map here. Um, by default, I think Revit guesses based on the resolution of the image, but we can change this to any size we want. We can make it really small or we can make it much larger, uh, which I think is what works for my project. You see how now you can see this image much larger and I'll, I'll make this bigger so that it 
you know, if you're looking at this on your phone, it doesn't look like a postage stamp. The other thing that you can do is you can move its position. So in this case, this is not a seamless image. So I'm, I'm not super excited about the way it's going to look on my project. You can change its position by uh, moving it um, uh, one way or the other. And you can type in a negative number or a positive number, and it will move it up or down. What you don't want to do is look at this preview image here every single time, but go to your project and see where it is in your project uh, by painting it on a surface, the surface that you intend it to go on. Now, I've just I made a single piece of uh, uh, mass here to paint my image on. And uh, so that gives me a really good idea of, of where the object, the image, and my, my material is going to be. So the first line of defense here, or the first line of whatever, what you're doing, is to take a look at the material in a rendered view, not just the realistic view, because that's going to give you a sense of bumpiness. If your light fixture, if the most important thing is kind of the appearance of the glass itself, um, the, the, the kind of surface of the glass. Um, you can absolutely just use Enscape and it works really well. And in fact, when you drag your bump level uh, up above, I think 500, um, it really makes a, uh, a dramatic kind of bumpiness. If I drag it down to a much lower level and hit apply, um, you see how it's a much softer kind of bump. Um, and, and something about that 500 threshold that I think makes it uh, extra extra bumpy. Um, and if you drag it the other way, by the way, um, to a negative number, in theory, it makes what's black appear to go away from the camera view. So obviously, this is a really, you know, it's a nice looking piece of glass. It's got a lot of rippliness. The very pronounced bumpiness can be changed by uh, using a softer image as well. So if I want that kind of grittier, grainier, but softer uh, black and white image, uh, I can get that here. I can also uh, change the uh, general uh, color of the image by just picking a color here. Of course, we can make it whatever color we want, but it's up to you. Um, you see how you can you can change that. You can also tint the glass, but changing the base color usually achieves the end result. Um, other features that you can change here, I tend to put the glossiness down to zero, but if you change it all the way up, you can see you get, a, you get some more reflections there. You may or may not want that. I don't know. Um, uh, the other thing is you can change how reflective the glass is. And what I would recommend, this is what I like about Enscape, is you can just make a change, hit apply, and decide whether or not you like it that way. Um, the same with uh, transparency. You can turn it on or off. <laughs> Obviously, it's glass, so transparency is probably something you would like in your glass. Um, but uh, if you do turn on, you can actually use an image to make some parts more transparent and some less. Uh, you can also just drag it down. If I uh, change the transparency level, you can see that the glass character changes. And obviously, if you have something like an art glass, which is semi-opaque, you're going to want to drag that transparency down. Whereas if you have something where you really uh, want to be able to kind of see through it a little bit, you can, you can change that uh, all the way up to the other uh, level. If your goal of your project is less about the surface of the glass and more about making a, a shadow pattern on the ground, well, then you have a problem. And the problem is that Enscape doesn't handle that particularly well. Uh, and so in this case, you may actually just want to render it in, you guessed it, good old Revit. And uh, I'm going to call up the render menu. Uh, and you can see here, here's my my sort of plaque with the glass on it. And I've made a little room to render this space in, uh, this object in. And I'll just hit render. Wow, that was fast. Uh, and as you can see, the glass, the etching on the glass, that the kind of funky bump pattern, uh, it does translate into a shadow on the back wall. I just have a spotlight shining through there. And uh, of course, that is what we're after, right? So uh, you can render it here in Revit uh, on your computer. Just remember artificial only, um, or you can send it to the render cloud and it should work just fine. Another thing you can play around with is having multiple light sources to get kind of different uh, overlapping shadow patterns on the wall. Uh, I am getting the edge of my little piece of glass here, but uh, basically you can get kind of interesting overlapping shadows 
uh, by having multiple light sources. The way I did that is in plan here I have my wall surface which as you can see is very thin. Um, and then I've, I've just created multiple light sources and rotated them. These are actually studio lights where I've edited the studio light to have that directional uh, quality. Um, the other thing that I will mention is that I, I have used a, a mass that's a single surface. And uh, single surfaces are really great for things like pieces of glass or curtains in front of windows. Uh, I will say that if you do a mass with a single surface and you try to 3D print it, it's not going to work, or at least it it usually doesn't work. So in that case, you might want to, if you're if you're doing it for 3D printing, you might want to give this a little bit of thickness. In our case, we're not doing 3D printing of this project, so there you go. And uh, while we're talking about it, I, I did want to mention the glowing materials, which are super handy, uh, but they only work in Enscape. Here's a, a glowing material I created uh, kind of behind this piece of glass here that, that I was showing you. Um, and you can see it throws off light in the space and it kind of glit glitters through the material. That can be a very nice effect either behind the glass or mounted above it um, so that you get light kind of grazing through the bumpiness that you created. Uh, in Revit, it doesn't do anything. This is the Revit rendered view. It's completely black. There's, uh, And that's because glowing materials don't they don't glow. They don't throw off light in Revit. They just um, shine. So it's actually just blocked by the glass. Uh, finally, here's the Revit render cloud. And as you can see, we're getting some nice coloration. You will want to take note of the color temperature of your light source so that you are getting the effect you want. This is a warm color temperature, which works well with my warm material. Uh, you can in you can adjust it somewhat here in the cloud, um, including the exposure value, the saturation, and, and some of the color features. Um, you can also add this bloom feature uh, which is kind of nice if you if you want a kind of glossy, I don't know, fuzzy look to it, you know, it, it'll take a little bit of time to re-render. And of course, you can re-render using those highest quality settings, uh, which is kind of nice, especially uh, when you go to that final rendering size, you make this 4000 pixels, Th that'll get you all that detail that is kind of the grittiness of uh, the sand that we're really hoping for. And of course, in Enscape, you just export it at a higher value. The last thing that I always recommend students do is, is go into Photoshop and do a final touch up uh, and kind of balance on your renders. Revit, this is, this is the render from the cloud and it doesn't always perform the way you want it to, especially when you have uh, something where you want the, the foreground and the background to both be kind of in focus and have a balance. So you can you can fiddle around with any number of these things. For example, you can control the color temperature ever so slightly. And this is great if when you kind of evaluate your final rendering, you're like, ah, oh, you know, it's a little too warm or it's a little too cold and uh, cool. And you can drag it either way. And these overarching uh, camera raw type of filters are, are super handy. Um, for a lot of these things, uh, you know, the contrasty, sometimes these images can be too contrasty or not enough. Um, and I, I, my, my strategy is just play around with the sliders to kind of get the effect that you want, particularly if you, if you have shadows that you're hoping will look more distinct or less distinct. Um, or in this case, uh, you see how I can, I can kind of up the value of the rest of the room uh, without changing the exposure, which has other effects. So anyway, each of these sliders does something different. Um, and you, you, you may end up just deciding, well, I, I want to desaturate it a little bit. Um, and because uh, sometimes that color on these white walls, it's just too much. Um, or you can overlay the colored image with black and white. There's all sorts of different uh, ways that you can post process your renderings. But I would strongly recommend you always do a, even just a touch of post processing because some of these can, can really make a big difference, uh, especially in something where you're trying to get a lot of detail. So to sum up, you can basically create glassy patterns overlaying all sorts of different types of Im base images, typically using a bump map, uh, but also using transparency maps 
um, or an image based, but I would st strongly recommend starting with a glass material and applying one feature at a time and seeing how it renders. You should also consider whether or not you want to render for surface appearance or if you want to render for shadows or if you want to render for both, uh, each of those has different implications as to how much time you're going to spend in Enscape, how much time you'll spend in our friend Revit, and how much time you're going to spend in Photoshop.